Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Ryzen 5 4500. At launch it didn't exactly receive rave reviews and I didn't even bother testing it myself because the second hand 3600 I had at the time was easily the more recommendable option. That said this 6 core 12 thread chip is currently available for around 80 quid here in the UK with Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection thrown in and I've seen similar deals available in the States too. At this price, it's the cheapest 6-core CPU currently occupying the new market, and despite the negative press at launch, a lot of user reviews I've seen have been pretty positive. Buying one of these, along with a budget AM4 board and what I like to call nothing special DDR4 memory, seems like a great way to upgrade that struggling old system, whether it's an aging Sandy Bridge build or a tired AM3 Plus FX rig. It seems like a great idea on paper anyway. Yes, it lacks PCIe 4.0 support, which means using it with an entry level 6400 or 6500 XT graphics card isn't the best idea due to those cards own bandwidth limitations, but if you're opting for a cheap motherboard it might not offer 4.0 support anyway, and that's more of a reason to avoid those aforementioned GPUs instead of this CPU. At its current price, the 4500 is cheaper new than used 3600s, occupying a similar price point as the i3-10100F, a quad-core chip that it'll trade blows with in gaming, but outperform in application benchmarks thanks to the extra cores and threads. The cost of either chip, as well as the required motherboards, will vary depending on where you live, and it might be that the 4500 makes no sense in the grand scheme of things where you are in the world. With that said, I think the price drop in a lot of territories will make it all the more popular, and now seems like the perfect time to bring you my review. I'm going to test the Ryzen 5 4500 with a couple of graphics cards today. I'll be pairing it with the ever popular and older GTX 1060, as well as a higher end and more modern RTX 3060 Ti, to give you a better idea of what you can expect at two different price points. Sure, the Ryzen 4500 might not always make sense in a comparative cluster of benchmarks, but if you are tempted by its combination of low cost and generous core count, hopefully I can help you decide if it's right for you. The GTX 1060 in the system represents a more budget focused setup. It also reflects a scenario I read a lot about in user reviews where some people had a gaming build that was let down by the performance of their older processor. Let's say that is the case and you are using what is still, according to Steam's hardware survey, the most popular GPU or something with equivalent power. The 1060 is a low cost yet still somewhat capable 1080p card that will admittedly struggle in some modern scenarios, but it just seems to keep going on and on. If you want to pair something like this with a Ryzen 5 4500, then said CPU won't be a hindrance. The card was the bottleneck during all of my tests today at this resolution, even in those particularly intensive games like Cyberpunk and Battlefield 1. There were spikes of up to 80% usage and sometimes a little beyond that, but the 4500 is more than fine in a setup like this, and for the £80 it cost me, along with Uncharted of course, I think it would make a fine upgrade to an ageing gaming rig that isn't holding up so well on the CPU side of things. Next I took a look at the performance of this processor in combination with an RTX 3060 Ti. Now I really wouldn't recommend this as a sensible companion to the 4500, but this paints an interesting picture because it points out the limitations of AMD's entry level 6 core chip. While the gaming results were definitely respectable with the slightly smaller selection of games exceeding or hitting very close to 60fps, even at 1440p resolution, the performance results weren't really any better when dropping the resolution down to 1920x1080 or 1080p. This indicates a clear CPU bottleneck. Furthermore, and in some cases, the games offered more stable percentile lows at the higher resolution. Don't get me wrong, these results are fine. I mean, high frame rates at 2560 by 1440 is nothing bad at all, but investing in an upper mid-range or higher-end car to pair with one of these processors would mean that you've got a lot of spare graphics card power going to waste. 
the 3060 Ti in this case can't give us any extra frames even at a reduced resolution because the Ryzen 5 is acting as a barrier or a ceiling to the potential performance that the GPU has available. Now the severity of the limitation depends on the game we're playing and on some occasions the graphics card will be utilised a lot more than in others. I can give you a good idea of how much this processor could potentially be holding us back by swapping out for a modern, albeit more expensive, 6-core chip and taking a look at a couple of cyberpunk results. With the same intensive crowd density setting turned up, you can see that the 3060 Ti is doing much better now at 1080p because the game has more CPU power to work with. Like I said though, the i5-12400F I'm using is more expensive, and this scenario is simply for demonstration and not as fair comparison data. The 1440p result is quite close though, which is interesting to see, but that's because the 3060 Ti becomes the limiting factor at these settings with this game. Aside from the average performance figures, the game is far more stable and consistent as shown by the percentile lows, and even though the 4500 by no means gave us an unplayable result, it may cause the occasional hiccup here or there. I think this CPU, the Ryzen 5 4400, definitely has a place, especially at its new price. If you want to give that old gaming PC of yours a bit more oomph, you could slap it in a really cheap A320 board with 16 gigs of dirt cheap DDR4 and perform a sort of hot swap with your old PC. It started off on the wrong foot because it was similar in price as the triumphant i3-12100F from Intel, but that seems to be going up in price, and 1700 socket boards are still more expensive too. I think the Ryzen 5 4400 has to be looked at on its own in a way because it's one of a kind at its current price point, even when factoring in the used prices of Ryzen 5 3600s. Not to mention that AM4 boards have been around what seems like forever, and at this point you can find them so cheap on the used market, they really do make a lot of sense in combination with a CPU like this. The 10100F i3 is worth considering too, and I've spoken of that in a positive light quite recently, so it seems unfair to compliment that and then slam this. This definitely should have launched at what it retails for now though. It would have received a far warmer reception, I'm sure. With all that said, those are my thoughts on the Ryzen 5 4400. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.